Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sports Talk Live. We got NFL talk, college football talk, and college basketball talk. Stay tuned. Sports Talk Live is next. Hello and again, welcome to Sports Talk Live. I am your host, Kyle Popovich. Today we're going to start off on a very controversial talk. Uh, the Ohio State and Michigan game uh, was this past weekend an intense one. It went two overtimes, but uh, it was very interesting. And along with me is my good friends, Miles Garvey and Sam Woodworth. We're actually going to throw it over to Sam to start off with. Sam, what was your, your thoughts on the Ohio State-Michigan game? Um, probably an instant classic. I was at work, so I didn't get to watch the game live. But I know that 16 million people across this country did, making it the most Ow. watched college football game in over 10 years. Ooh. Plus the fact it's the first time in the game's history that it went to overtime. And not just overtime, double overtime. Mm. Wow. Obviously, it's going to come down to that huge call on fourth and one. Did JT Barrett get that first down, or was he short? Jim Harbaugh said, oh, he was short by this much. And I, I, I didn't get a full look at the replay, so I can't tell you definitively whether he was or wasn't. Mm -hmm. so. well, um, well uh, biased fan here, but I, JT Barrett got the first down. It was for progress. He <coughs> got hit <coughs> on the knee. He flew forward. He, he like, in midair, he hit an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman, and then he fell back about a half yard short of the line, but the ball crossed the line. His body crossed they the line reviewed, the ball. They called it a first down on the field. They mm, reviewed the mm, play. Yep, the play stood. Yep. Uh, Michigan did play out, Ohio, play, outplay Ohio State for the first three quarters of this okay. one, but uh, in the final fourth quarter uh, and overtime, JT Barrett and the entire Ohio State offense ran all over them. Uh, they were able to bring the game back, bring it to overtime. It shouldn't even have really went to overtime, even no. though Michigan did pretty much it. Like watching the game, the eye test said Michigan was really dominating this game. But after you looked at it, Ohio State missed two field goals uh, inside 40 yards where their kicker hadn't even missed all year. He was 14 for 14 coming in the game. He missed a 20-yarder and a 36-yarder uh, in the game. Made a 23-yarder to send it to overtime. But missing the two field goals, Ohio State should have that should have put him at 20 points, and it shouldn't even have went to overtime. Tied at 17. So, I mean... I don't even know why Michigan fans are being angry about it. They're, they're lucky it even got to overtime. Yeah, you have the college kicker. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's just something common in college football games. I don't understand it. You know, your kickers, <laughs> you're brought in to, to kick a ball. And for how many times I will watch just like a random uh, game, college game, and just college kickers missing. And it's looking like the NFL now. And I never thought I'd be able to say that. <laughs> but uh, final of that game was 30-27, to 27, double overtime for Ohio State. Moving on to our next topic, we have NFC talk. Who's in, who's out of the playoffs? Uh, Miles, you want to start this one off? Yeah, I'll start it. My number one seed, obviously Dallas. I mean, 10-1. The, the offense looks like it can't be stopped. It'll be oh, tested yeah. against the tough Minnesota Vikings defense this week on Thursday. Uh, but, I mean, they've been getting... People have been running all over them, besides Detroit, who can't run against anybody. No. Um, and then I like Seattle, obviously, Atlanta, Detroit in the NFC North because the Vikings and uh, Packers are just a mess right now. Uh, then I got the Giants and Washington actually making it in the wild card spot. I mean, I could see Tampa, maybe Minnesota turning it around, maybe even Green Bay. They just won yeah, yeah. Uh, last Two night versus Philly. So they could maybe bring it back. The NFC North's only getting one in, whoever wins it. But Tampa Bay, maybe if they can come back, because, I mean, Atlanta, they've been known to – uh, falter in the second half yep, of the season. So exactly. they can, they're on a two-game win streak, just beat Seattle. So. Mm -hmm. Sam, what are your thoughts? Um, I'd have to agree with you on Dallas in the East. I think they're really unstoppable at this point. Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. Who would have thought that that combo would get this team to 10-1 and one, considering last year there wasn't a quarterback named Tony Romo on the Dallas Cowboys who could buy a win? Mm -hmm. right. uh, Seattle has the West. It's theirs to lose. They're up by three games right now. I'm disappointed in the NFC West and how it truly has panned out this year, considering you have Arizona. L.A. was supposed to do something. They had a strong start, and they just faltered in classic Jeff Fisher style. <laughs> yeah. uh, eight, eight South is Atlanta's to lose. Obviously, Tampa Bay's coming up. I was impressed with their victory on Sunday against Seattle. Uh, Seattle's tough to beat even this year. I have Minnesota coming back in the North. I think right. they're going to win four of their final six games or four of their final five games. I think if they lose, it's to Dallas. I think they went out the rest of the way, and I think that they make it in in the North. Wild cards of uh, Giants and Washington. So the East will get three teams in in the playoffs this year, which is 
Uh, I, d I guess you can call them maybe the strongest division in the NFC. Yeah, no, I'd easily. agree. I think the weakest division is what we talked about, the NFC North. Uh, you got Detroit. The Detroit Lions leading the NFC North this far into the season at 7-4. and four. First time in 25 years. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if things keep playing out the way they are, you know, poor play and injuries just crowding the NFC North right now, Lions have a chance to take it away. And right now, I have the Lions securing this NFC North uh, division title. Green Bay does have a favorable schedule uh, somewhat down the line. Lions have a very tough schedule. But I just see Minnesota, they have you know, just a lot of injuries. We've seen their offensive line just abused by injuries. Garbage. Right. Adrian right. Peterson, he may return in December. Now, that could be something <laughs> huge for them. Will he do right. something behind this offensive line is the biggest question for them. I, yeah. I have no clue. Probably not. I mean, he had, what, 50 yards before he got hurt? So, I mean, All right. what, what can you really say? All right, moving on from the NFC, we're going to go to the AFC and talk about who's in, who's out. Sam, do you want to start this one off? I'll start this one off. In the East, I have the Patriots. They're the perennial favorites in the AFC East. They've already gotten past everybody in the division, and Tom Brady's playing lights out, basically a giant. Um, I don't know what you can say. I, I can't say it here on television. Basically, he's telling Goodell to screw off, essentially. Mm. Uh, Oakland, shockingly, in the West, they're up this year. I think they, they're they going to be easily a Super Bowl contender right now, or even a favorite. Probably my favorite would be the Patriots. Houston's going to hang on in the South, I think. I think they will, especially playing well at home, even though they lost this week at home for the first time. And I got Pittsburgh winning the AFC North. I think Big Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown is the connection right now in the NFL. Kansas City and Miami are my two wild cards at this point. Miami's just playing lights out right now. Mm -hmm. And you can credit that to, I guess, Ryan Tannehill and that offense. Uh, yeah, I, I like their defense more than their offense. I mean, Ryan Tannehill has been playing pretty well, but Adam, Adam Gase really – making Ryan Tannehill step up. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. But that defense is fantastic. I actually don't have them making the playoffs. Uh, I have New England as my number one seed and Oakland as my number two. Obviously, that could go either way. They are both they both seem to be the class in the AFC right now. And then my three seed, I got Pittsburgh, actually. I think yep. they've been inconsistent. I think they'll figure it out. I mean, with Big Ben, uh, the Danian Thomas, is Le'Veon Bell, <laughs> and Antonio Brown, that offense is just so potent. And then I like Tennessee coming in the South, or AFC South. Uh, they're playing the best. I think, I think... I don't really trust Houston and Brock Osweiler, no. $72 million quarterback. Stealing money from Houston. <laughs> 12 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Wow. I mean, that's worse than Teddy Bridgewater. Worst passer rating in the NFL right now. <laughs> and um, DeMarco Murray, too. He's lighting up. Yeah, DeMarco yes, Murray is, is killing yep. it. And Derrick Henry actually had a pretty good game. Um, he did. With yeah. the limited yeah. yards he had last week. Right. Um, and then I have Kansas City, obviously. And I have Denver in uh, the second wild card. Again, another... Division getting three teams in. Mm -hmm. I like Denver's defense. I don't like their offense at all. Don't think they could no. win a game. It's in the time to go to Pax and Lynch. Can I just say that? Right. I've been waiting <laughs> to see Pax and Lynch. Trevor Simeon is obviously not getting the job done. Bring in the first rounder. You traded up for him. Remember that. Yeah. But I think for me right now, I agree. I think the Steelers are going to overtake the Ravens for the AFC North uh, division lead. I think the Dolphins, they're going to fight for it, but I just see the Broncos coming back and stealing that one. I think we are going to see the West, just like the NFC East, send three teams in. Uh, and then AFC South, that one's going to be a close one. I still think it's going to be Colts or Titans. I'd love to see the Titans take it. Uh, the young team never thought they'd bounce back right. from where they were last year to this year, but they kind of followed the Cowboys strategy. They really built an offensive line with Taylor Lewin and Jack Conklin, first round picks. You had Chance Warmack, uh, Chance Warmack in there, and then you get DeMarco Murray via trade and yeah. Derrick Henry in the second round. Right. You built your offense around Marcus Mariota and you gave him weapons, which was perfect for Tennessee. So that's what we got right now for AFC. Stay tuned, but first we're going to look at those adorable perfect pets. Hi, my name is Poppy. I'm a curious, cuddly kitty who is looking for a forever home. Hi, I'm Chaplin. I'm adventurous and I love to have elaborate conversations. Hi, my name is Jake and I'm a six-year-old lab mix. I'm very affectionate and love hanging out with humans. Hey, I'm Kendrick. I'm a goofy, sweet, affectionate two-year-old. I love people and playtime. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. All right, we're going to stay on the topic of NFL talk, but we're going to go to awards. It is past midseason. We're going to talk about the awards season. Uh, first up, we're going to discuss the offensive MVP, currently the NFL. Sam, take it away. 
Um, it's, at this point, it's hard to bet against anybody on Dallas's team offensively. Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott will both be favorites for Rookie of the Year. But the offensive line is not getting as much credit as I think that they're getting. A lot of first-round talent on that line. And, I mean, look what they did a couple years ago for DeMarco Murray. They made him the NFL's leading rusher. And now they're doing the same thing for Ezekiel Elliott, a rookie. I mean, he's still a great rookie, but... I think that the line's doing well. Tom Brady's up there for MVP. I know it's the cliche. It's either him or um, Peyton Manning, but now Peyton Manning's retired. So you got to pass the torch to somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think Brady's just playing lights out, too, even though he missed four games. That might be the only reason why I don't think he wins the MVP. Um, Derek Carr's playing well, too. I think Oakland's a completely different team without him at starting quarterback. You've still got Amari Cooper at wide receiver, Michael Crabtree, the veteran in there, thrown in the mix. But Derek Carr makes or breaks this offense. And even as strong as Oakland's defense is, I don't think that they're in the position that they're at right now without Derek Carr. Um, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, I, the reason I would say Tom Brady doesn't win is he, his team went 3-1 and one without him Correct. playing. So, right. I mean, how could you give him the most valuable player of the year award? But I got Derek Carr, man. You're wearing yep. jersey. You're wearing. I'm repping Derek I, Carr right now. I mean, he's got Oakland nine and two. I, th- oh, I mean, man. a lot of us thought of. And maybe, with that defense, they're right. nine and two. Yeah, that yeah. defense is what, like the worst in the league. And one of the worst. One yes. of the worst. Uh, um, bottom five, probably. Uh, I just, who would have thought Oakland would be nine and two right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people thought maybe wild card team for sure, but winning the division and challenging the Patriots, maybe getting the Patriots to go through. Oakland yeah, to the Super yep. Bowl. I mean, I think and that's where MVP speaks for Derek Carr. It's been proven in the past that the MVP is an award for quarterbacks. Two years ago, the biggest controversy is Aaron Rodgers won the MVP, but I think many people can agree that J.J. Watt was almost most deserving of it. But lately, uh, for the last 20 years, I mean, MVP has been meant for quarterbacks. And if we're looking at a quarterback who has done the most for his team, it's Derek Carr. He's top 10 in almost every major uh, category, uh, statistical category. Uh, in the NFL, and what was it, Sunday he dislocated his pinky in two different places, came back out with a glove, and still let his team to win. On a comeback. Uh, Yeah, on a comeback. I mean, it was truly uh, amazing to think that the Oakland Raiders, I still had them as a potential wild card spot. I thought the Chiefs, their defense, I mean, they're 8-3 right now, holding down the fifth spot in the (laughs) AFC. That just shows you how tough the AFC really is. Uh, But for the Raiders, huge improvement from last season. Jack Del Rio deserves a lot of credit. Derek Carr, the most. Moving on to our next award, it's going to be the defensive MVP. Miles, who do you have? I have Von Miller. I mean, 12 and a half sacks, I think about 50 tackles on the year so far. He's got a forced fumble. Uh, I'm sure that'll happen. I mean, he's always making clutch forced fumble tackles. So, I mean, I'm sure that he'll probably get a couple more of those. Uh, And he's leading the NFL in sacks. Uh, Von Miller just seems like the guy. There's not really, without J.J. Watt, there's not really that standout guy this year. Uh, Maybe you, Landon Collins. Yep, I know yep, before we were talking about it, he leads every every category for safeties. He's tied for first in sacks or yep. whatever. But I, I like Von Miller. I'm, I'm comfortable with that pick. Right. I'd, I'd have to agree with you on the Landon Collins thing. When he's up there in interceptions, he's up there in a lot of the defensive backfield categories. Um, yeah, like you said, without J.J. Watt, there's really no definitive defensive player that's almost worthy of winning this award. I mean... It just it do, it just doesn't seem like there's a true front runner at this point. But I guess if I had to say that there's one, I guess it, I'd say it's Landon Collins. Oh yeah, Collins has evolutionized it, uh, his game since college. Coming out of Alabama, he was you know an in the box prototypical thumper, uh, strong safety, and all of a sudden he's pulling off an Ed Reed from 2004, which is just amazing. <laughs> Moving on to our next award, we have Offensive Rookie of the Year. I think many people can kind of get the gist of who that's going to be. But Sam, you yeah. want to take this one away? Yeah, at this point, it's either going to be Dak Prescott or Ezekiel mm-hmm. Elliott, or right. both. Maybe they maybe they do the whole co, co- and yeah. offensive rookie of the year thing since they're teammates, and it's like, who do you really want to favor one or the other? Um, right. And I mean, if I had to pick one or the other at this point, I'd say Ezekiel Elliott, but a lot of that credit goes to the offensive line. He's still an explosive running back out of Ohio State. Um, and I just I think this offensive line can make anybody look good, but they make Ezekiel Elliott look like one of the best players in the league mm-hmm. by right. far. Right. I mean, I mean they made uh, Darren McFadden, Darren McFadden, yeah. a thousand yard yeah. rusher. Darren McFadden, who hasn't had a good year since Illinois. Right. Um, <laughs> but he uh, he I mean Zeke's got what twelve hundred rush yards, eleven touchdowns, fifteen hundred all purpose yards. Yeah. Uh, yep. Twelve total touchdowns. I mean, he he looks he looks the part. He, he does. Really does. And he being a rookie, he leads the rookies. Or actually, leads the NFL in every rushing category, yep. uh, except touchdowns. He's got 11, LeGarrette Blunt has 12. But out of a rookie running back, yeah, he's the only running back in the NFL averaging over 100 yards rushing per game. He's almost at 5 yards per carry, which is just astounding. And he's already got 243 attempts. He set rookie rushing records for the Cowboys already. Mm-hmm. And when you have an offensive line like that, I mean, 
And you take him in the, with the fourth overall pick. I mean, you're you're betting on a season like that. Well, you knew his offensive that offensive line was going to make him productive. Mm-hmm. And also, a big thing for him winning that award is Jerry Jones came out and said today that uh, his workload will not be reduced at all down the all stretch right. of the season. So he'll still be getting the same amount of touches, same amount of carries. Good for fantasy owners, but uh, oh, definitely will also help his chances to win that rookie of the year. Mm-hmm. I need to squeak in the playoffs, Ezekiel Elliott. It's up to you to get me in there. <laughs> Do you think it's worrisome to have his workload not reduced? I mean, he's 243 he, attempts already. He's 21, and he's he is a pounding back, he's, but he's not like an Adrian Peterson pounding back, you know? I mean, right. he does impose his will sometimes, but, I mean, no, I don't think he's 21. You, you fear maybe one of those times that he hurdles a defender that he's, he's just going to awkwardly land on his leg or something, maybe tear an ACL, but other yeah. than that. All right, moving on, we got Coach of the Year, uh, counting both NFC and AFC. Miles, start us off. Who is your Coach of the Year? Jack Del Rio. I mean, again, Oakland Raiders, who who had him at 9-2. and two. Not yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, he ha- he's got the guts to do the... Go for the win, throw a fade Four down route conversions, on, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two point, two point conversions. conversions. Yep. So I, I like Jack Del Rio. I mean, you can make a case for Jason Garrett and also Adam Gase down in Miami mm-hmm. with the six game win streak. It looked like all hope was lost for their season at one and four, and now they're what seven and four. Yeah. Yep. So, seven and four. I mean, he he makes Ryan Tannehill look like an actually decent NFL quarterback. Yeah. So Sam, uh, you could say Jason Garrett in Dallas at ten and one right now. You could say Jack Del Rio with the nine and two Oakland Raiders. Adam Gase with the Miami Dolphins. You throw Bill Belichick in there for good measure because yeah. he's always in the conversation for this. If you told me, if you asked me when the Vikings started five and zero, I had Mike Zimmer as my coach of the year. Easy. I have to take that back at this point because at this point he's going to have to have his team win out to even be considered close to coach of the year status. But um, yeah, right now it's got to be either Garrett. Del Rio, they got to be like one and two right now, easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Adam Gase is my pick for NFL Coach of the Year. Uh, reason being is we saw what he did in uh, Denver as such a young offensive cor- uh, coordinator. He comes to Chicago last year, makes Jay Cutler look like an above-average quarterback, uh, had just one of his better statistical seasons, and Adam Gase is almost like a quarterback whisperer. Uh, the Dolphins started out one and four, six-game win streak, and Tannehill's been behind that. Him and... Uh, Jay uh, Ajayi, yeah, yeah, just he's going to be a thousand yard rusher this year, and to see what Gase has right. done, not only with that offense but defense. I mean, Gase isn't even forty years old yet, and there's always that skepticism amongst uh, NFL head coaches who are under the age of forty. Do they have the experience? Do they have the tolerance to be that guy that we need to take us to that next level? And right now, Gase has his team in a wild card spot. Right. I mean, it's he's, he's definitely he's, he's done. Done well. Yeah, it's definitely something I didn't expect. Our last topic is going to be NFL surprises. What are your surprises? Teams, players throughout the year so far. Uh, well, for teams, I just did my teams. I had a lot of good surprises this year in the NFL. Uh, Oakland, Miami, Tennessee, Detroit, Tampa, Dallas, and Philly. A lot of that coming in the NFC. The NFC has been really unpredictable this year. We all would have said Seattle, Carolina, and uh, Arizona probably in the top. Oh, maybe yeah. Green Bay being a top team. And But now you're looking at, like, Dallas, who went 4-12 and last year without Tony Romo. Tony Romo was hurt. You were surprised by that. And there's, there's obviously been a lot of bad surprises in the NFL with Green Bay, Carolina, Arizona, and Cincinnati. Cincinnati, a playoff team. Arizona and Carolina look like the best teams in the NFL last mm-hmm. year. They've just gone to complete poop. And now <laughs> Green Bay, is, they did win last night, and they looked better. But Yeah, I mean, they needed that win against They Philadelphia. really needed it, but they, the whole year they have not looked top cream of the crop. Yep. Sam? I'd say the bad, a bad surprise for me is the entire NFC West, like you said. You had Carolina, the defending NFC champions. Arizona, they were runner-ups in the conference last year. They're both underperforming, only at four wins apiece right now. And Seattle has ran away with that division, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, a good surprise, I guess, is Tampa Bay. They kinda came, they're kind of coming out of nowhere right now. It's 6-5. and five. It's still not a great record, but they're only one game back of Atlanta, and we know Atlanta. And they can just, at any moment, they can collapse. So mm-hmm. I think Tampa Bay, I even watched part of that game on Sunday against Seattle. That defense was getting to Russell Wilson a lot, and that's that's saying a lot considering Russell Wilson's one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the NFL. To get to him that often and make him that worrisome and only giving up five points to that Seattle offense, that's a staple performance for their season so far. For sure. Mm-hmm. Very agreeable. Uh, my, my surprise, and it's bad, it's the AFC South. The Jaguars won the offseason. The Texans won the offseason, getting some offensive uh, parts for what was a wild card team. The Colts get a healthy Andrew Luck back in the Titans, and no, nobody's better than 6-5. and five. So disappointing, but stay tuned. There's more Sports Talk Live next. But first, let's take a look at our UWL Sports promo. <coughs> Introducing WMCM's newest sports show, Hot Shot Sports. It's got games, memes, Highlights, 
gifts, and everything else that you'd ever want from a sports show, like everything current from social media and all other sports action. So tune in to Charter Channel 989 and Campus Channel 6 for some hot shot sports. Do you need better opinions on the biggest sports stories? Then you need Sports Talk Live. They cover all sports all the time. From track and field, to soccer, to football, gymnastics, and just about everything in between. Sports Talk Live is your place for sports. Sports Talk Live, Tuesdays on WMCM TV. All right, welcome back to Sports Talk Live. We've been talking a little bit about professional sports. We're going to bump it down to college sports. First up, we have NCAA football playoffs upcoming. Miles, what are your thoughts? Well, I think right now Alabama and Ohio State are pretty much locks. Uh, and then I, I look at Clemson and Washington. I, for my top four getting in, I think Alabama and Clemson will be one and two. I think Clemson jumps Ohio State for that number two spot because of the conference championship, obviously. But Ohio State, I don't think Penn State or Wisconsin gets over them. They don't match the resume, even with the conference championship. Ohio State has wins over Oklahoma, a top uh, 10 team, I believe. Uh, Michigan, who's probably one of the best four teams in college football right mm -hmm. now. Wisconsin, and beating Nebraska 62-3, to who was a top 10 team at the time. So nobody really matches the resume. My first two out are Wisconsin, because I think Wisconsin will beat Penn State in the Big Ten championship. And uh, Michigan, number six, I think they will... Be right there. First two teams out. One of them will go to the Rose Bowl, probably Wisconsin, with uh, the Big Ten championship win and go lose to USC, probably. All right. <laughs> Sam, what are your thoughts? As much as I uh, don't want to agree about, the, about Ohio State, I do think they're a lock. I think Alabama's a lock, regardless of their performance in the SEC title game. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they're, they are playing Florida, but I still think Alabama wins the SEC championship. They're easily the favorites for the national title at this point. Ohio State, again, nobody can match their resume, even without that conference championship. They're going to test the college football playoff committee's whole, is a conference title more valuable than just a really good record kind of discussion, and I think they're going to win that discussion and they're going to make it probably not as a two seed probably as maybe the three mm -hmm. i don't think they dropped to four they're either two or three they're right there in the middle um clemson i think it hinges on them winning the acc title if they can't win the acc title they're not worthy yeah. i mean yeah they only have one loss in the year but i still don't think that they're worthy of being in the final four if they don't have that conference championship washington they they got to win if they don't win and colorado beats them i think colorado's got a shot an outside shot but it's still a shot and I think the Big Ten can sneak somebody else in again if Washington and or Clemson lose. I think the Big Ten will sneak another team in, whether it's the conference champion, either Wisconsin or Penn State, or maybe even if Michigan finds some way to burrow into the college some football way. four, maybe a rematch with Ohio State, for either in the semifinal or the national title. That would be huge. Uh, I, I think if Washington loses, uh, the winner of the Big Ten championship gets in then, and I think two Big Ten teams make it. Uh, which is definitely a possibility. Colorado is not a slouch team. They're, they're a good team. Mm -hmm. I think they're ranked ninth right yeah, now. Ninth, they're, yeah. they're a good team. They're two losses, I believe. I don't think that jumps them. Beating Washington, I don't think that jumps them into uh, contention for the college football playoffs. So I think the Big Ten champion would get in over them. Wisconsin or Penn State, either one. Uh, so I think my top four is pretty set. I don't think Washington will lose. But if they do, then look for a second Big Ten team to uh, Scrum in there. If you're looking for something good on TV tonight, college football playoff rankings come out tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, we're going to transition from college football to college basketball. College basketball season is underway. We have some discussions about Big Ten basketball. Guys, oh, yeah. where are you going to start off? Well, I mean, the top class is always pretty much the same. I mean, you have Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue, and Michigan State. Uh, sometimes Ohio State gets up there if that model can get in a good recruiting class. Right now, I have them as my sleeper team. I think if Ohio State can get some... Uh, consistent play from Jaquan Lyle and bring back Kata Bates D up who's got a sprained ankle right now and if they get consistent play from Jaquan Lyle they have the best shooter in the country right now he's shooting Cam Williams he's shooting 56 percent from three-point land he's 18 of 32 on the year he's he's out of this world when he gets yeah, his feet set uh, he comes hot. he's usually off the bench he, right. he's usually the sixth man but he's been starting in uh, role of Kata Bates D up and he's, I think he's averaging like 12 points a game, which is pretty good for college. So if they can get some consistent play from Jaquan Lyle, they could definitely challenge maybe for a top seed in the Big Ten uh, tournament. And I think they make the NCAA tournament after missing it last year as well. Wow. Sam? I'm up, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of agree with you with that. Wisconsin, Indiana, Purdue, Michigan State, Ohio State are kind of your 
Big Five in that Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin's just got to play consistent basketball. The two big games they've had this year, and they were both losses, Creighton and North Carolina, they've got to step up against top talent at this point in this season. You can blow these non-conference opponents out by 40 points all you want, but you have to play consistent against some of the best teams. And the Big Ten produces some of the best college basketball teams out there. Mm-hmm. So you, they got to get back into consistent play. they got to start hitting their jump shots. they got to make possessions count. they got to play that Bull Ryan-esque basketball under Greg Gard. I think it, I think they're going to be at least top two, top three in the Big Ten, but this might be uh, Indiana's year, maybe win the Big Ten. Yeah, Indiana's easily. really good. All right, and then moving on from Big Ten to overall college basketball. We talked that this segment's called College Predictions. I want to hear your predictions for the <laughs> national championship. All right, who do you guys got? Uh, I think you got to go with the big dogs always at the beginning of the year because you don't know where they're going to fall. I like Duke. I like Duke a lot. Right, I like yeah. Duke the most. I think so. they're going to win it. Uh, I think they play Kentucky. Kentucky, again, always good. Um, Duke versus Kentucky, we finally get the game we wanted two years ago that Wisconsin had to ruin for us. <laughs> yeah. But I think Duke, they, they're playing right now, I think they're 6-1 and one or 5-1 and one or 7-1. and one. They, They're playing without their two, star, two starters, uh, two really big uh, freshmen, Jason, Jason Tatum and uh, Harry Giles, and then also Marquise Bolston, who's a big-time freshman, coming in. Their depth is unbelievable. They probably could go 10 deep. They're gonna, they have like four or five maybe even six NBA players on their, on their team. So I, I'd like, I like them over Kentucky, even though Kentucky, they got outstanding shooting with Malik Monk, and DeAndre Fox just put up a triple-double, the second in Kentucky history basketball, which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. I, again, I got to agree with you at this point. It's the big dogs until we can kind of settle out past non-conference schedules and get into conference play. So Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, North Carolina, the defending national champion Villanova Wildcats are up there. I mean, there's so much disparity in college basketball. Until we can get into conference play and get the season settled down, it's tough to find out who's actually going to win. If I had to say today, I think it's either Kentucky or Duke. Yeah, easily. Hmm. They're both really special teams. They're both. I mean, Jason, Jason Tatum and Harry Gu- or Harry Giles are both projected to be like one and two in the NBA draft as freshmen, and they have Grayson Allen, who's considered the best college basketball player because they never make it a freshman. They always make it an upper class. But yeah, Grayson yeah. Allen's really good. They have Luke Kennard, who's, I believe, a sophomore, who's averaging, like, 17, 8, and, like, 4 right now. He's killing it. They're just – their depth is unbelievable. And Coach K, I mean. Oh, yeah. Coach, <laughs> Coach K, K, Coach Calipari, two of the best coaches in college basketball right now. They can make anybody look good. And they got great recruiting classes this year. All right, moving on to our final segment. Sam, you're going to start us off with rants. What are you ranting about today? Um, I guess I just have to rant about the Minnesota Vikings. Where did you go? You went 5-0 five, five to start the year. So much aspirations for this team. Uh, NFC North champs again was the hope. Conference championships, maybe even bringing that elusive Super Bowl to Minnesota. Where did you go? Your offensive line, completely garbage. Despite not giving up a sack this week against Detroit, second time you've done that this year, first was against Tennessee in week one. Um, I just think that you need to really step up your game. Um, for my rant, I just want to talk to Michigan fans. Uh, don't get mad at a forward progress call. <laughs> that is so hard to call on the field. It was called the first down, and they reviewed it, and they accepted it. Get over it. Get mad at your team for allowing JT Barrett and Ohio State to run all over your defense in the fourth quarter in overtime. Get mad at your <laughs> offense for not scoring more than three points in double overtime. Get mad at your defense again for letting Curtis Samuel run back and forth and back and forth for 10 minutes on third and nine to set up a fourth and one. Get mad at your defense for letting Curtis Samuel again on the next play after the fourth and one for running 15 yards untouched in the end zone. Get mad at your team for having seven penalties for 59 yards and Ohio State only having two for six. And get mad at your team for three turnovers, a pick six, and a fumble at your own two, at the two-yard line of Ohio State about to score. All right, I don't know how I can top that rant, <laughs> but uh, if I'm going to get angry at anything, kickers in the NFL, <laughs> you have one job. And it is to kick it through the uprights. For how many extra points that have been missed this year? The NFL changed that so kickers could get involved. Yet you're missing extra points, losing jobs at that cost. Blair Walsh. I mean, Robbie Gold lost his job earlier in the year for Chicago because he was missing extra points in the preseason. You have one job. And it is to make extra points, not just field goals. They did this for a reason. You're supposed to be making field goals. If you don't, it's been proven that you're going to lose your job. So that's my rant. I think that's all the time we have now on uh, Sports Talk Live for today. We had a great time, that's for sure. But uh, stay tuned. Afternoon Delight will be coming up at 4 o'clock. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.